she was the youngest of the Mitford sisters. Six sisters who really caught the public imagination. She, of course, married Andrew Cavendish and became the Duchess of Devonshire. Then her sister Nancy became a novelist and then sinisterly her other sister Diana married Oswald Mosley who was a fascist. So they were kind of infamous and larger than life, a bit like the Kardashians are today. You could say they were the Kardashians of the 1940s. We drove up to the Derbyshire Dales where Chatsworth, the stately home in which she lived, was located. We came up the drive and it was like something out of an Evelyn War novel, like Brideshead Revisited. We could see this grand building coming into view. We knocked on the door and there she was, these piercing blue eyes, the product of generations of good-looking people from the aristocratic upper classes marrying each other. She looked me up and down and she said, how long is this going to take? Five minutes? Panicked by her brusque manner, I decided to get something quickly. That's always something you have to bear in mind that sometimes shoots are really, really quick. So get something simple and strong as quickly as you can. Where she was, I got the camera out, I put it on a tripod and I shot some pictures against this grand front door. I suggested that we have a walk around all around us was this spectacular countryside, great rolling hills. And I just sort of said to her, do you know what? This would make a great golf course. I looked at the journalist and she looked at me as if to say, what are you saying that for? Sometimes there's just something that changes, a catalyst, changes the atmosphere, enables you to get onto another level with a person because it is a record of the relationship you have with the person on the day. Deborah turned around and she said, that's what my husband always says. And suddenly it became lighter. She relaxed. I mentioned that my father was a pig farmer. She said, do you want to see the pigs? To my astonishment, she got in with the wieners, the little pigs. She was on all fours and they were nuzzling her. The whole time, she still managed to look classy. So back then, I was shooting exclusively on film, medium format cameras. They're quite unyieldy, but they give much better quality results than 35 millimeter. The pictures in the pig pen, I shot on Tri-X because there wasn't much light in there. So I needed to push the film. So that's where you underexpose the film, but you compensate by over processing it. So you give it more time in the development. That's called push processing. Eventually we wound up with the chickens. They were sort of in an enclosure in which there was this grand building, which she proudly told me was the only listed chicken shed in the UK. So the chicken image, the one that ended up in my portfolio, that's been sort of syndicated widely, been on the covers of lots of magazines, was taken very, very quickly. And it was a genuine moment. She just picked up a couple of Rhode Island Reds, the chickens that she's holding. And I think if you were shooting that for a book cover commercially, and you had all day, you would probably struggle to get as good a result. It's just one of those lucky moments that I was given during a lifetime of photography. Yeah. Feet are in the right place. She's relaxed. She looks like she's used to handling fowl. It works. Sadly, the Duchess is no more. She died in 2014. But I like to think that she liked the picture because in 2010, when she released her memoir, Wait For Me, I got a call from her publisher and they wanted to use it on the cover which I think is a ringing endorsement if ever there was one.